A few days after Donald Trump met the Saudi crown prince, the U.S. president is now hosting the Emir of Qatar, a country under diplomatic blockade by Saudi Arabia and its allies since June 2017. Now, welcoming the Emir of this oil-rich country, Trump was more than a bit player in the formation of the crisis. He firmly sided with Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and other neighbors who accused Qatar of funding terrorism, spreading extremism, and provoking regional unrest. The continuation of the GCC crisis between Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and UAE and Bahrain uh, has been uh, directly encouraged by the United States. This is how uh, Trump plays the Saudis, the Emiratis, and Bahrain against uh, Qatar and vice versa. So uh, the United States can gain more uh, economically, especially in, in terms of selling uh, both parties or both sides uh, more weapons. And we've seen that with the Saudi uh, visit uh, earlier this month, uh, uh, where, where Saudi Crown Prince signed hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in economic uh, deals, especially in the military side, with the United States. And we are seeing Tamim, the Amir of Qatar, also doing that. Over the recent months, Washington has been making overtures to Qatar shifting from describing the country as a funder of terror to an important force for political stability and economic progress in the Persian Gulf region. In fact, by September last year, Trump had changed his mind, insisting that Saudi and Qatari leaders should negotiate an end to the crisis. Now, on the eve of Trump's White House meeting with Tamim bin Hamad al-Thani, the U.S. State Department has given the go-ahead for $300 million in arms sales to Qatar. The, the Saudi vision uh, or view of Trump uh, trying to sign deals with, with the Qatari government is, of course, uh, uh, they are not happy about it. But I think also they realize the amount of uh, money that Qatar is spending is very small and the amount of weaponry that the uh, Qataris are buying is extremely small comparatively to the Saudi purchases. So. Uh, they are, I think, uh, uh, unhappy with, the, with, with Trump, but at the same time, they don't think it's going to change the military balance between the two sides. Uh, Qatar does not have the capacity, the military capacity, to fight off a uh, Saudi invasion or a Saudi military attack. Uh, the only way Qatar can protect itself is, is maybe in the eye of the Qatari government, is, is to have uh, uh, an American insurance policy. And that's what they are trying to do here in this visit. The Qatari Emir's meeting comes amid news that Saudi Arabia plans to turn Qatar into an island by building a canal along the border with the country and dumping nuclear waste in it. Construction of the canal would widen the rift between Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Saudi desire to expand its influence and to gain control of the uh, one of the largest gas reservoirs in the, in the world, worth $45 trillion. That's 200 years of Saudi budget, annual budget. So that's why the UAE and Saudi Arabia, they want to uh, really uh, attack and capture this very, very wealthy uh, and small nation so they can divide uh, the, its uh, its natural resources among them uh, and to sustain themselves into the future. And this is the real reason. And that's why I don't think the, the American sale of weapon to Qatar will, will stop that des desire. Saudi Arabia has been always an expansionist uh, state uh, since its beginning, and they want to control greater and expand their territory and expand their uh, revenue sources. And that's what they are trying to do by, by uh, invading or planning to invade Qatar. The de facto leader of another Qatari opponent, the UAE, is soon due to visit the White House. Confusion over the Trump administration's regional policy goals has prompted a caravan of Arab leaders to visit Washington to lobby directly for their interests. <laughs>